Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Yes. We're back. And we made it through the hurricane. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for checking on us. Um, we didn't really sustain much rain. Mm -hmm. Just a little wind. We lost power for yeah. a couple days, but we had a generator, so that was good. Yeah. Nothing too crazy around here. The storm went south, so. Yeah. So prayers for those people that got affected by, yeah. by that. Um, don't look at my joke. <laughs> so once again, thank you for reaching out, checking on us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with my joke mm -hmm. and with a quote and in between the joke and the quote we're going to share some things and hopefully you'll get something out of it um yeah and this is going to be a, this is going to be some good stuff for you guys tonight yeah. we actually like i i mean i can't speak for you but i actually missed doing last week i was like i feel like we haven't been on here in forever yeah so it was kind of i'm glad to be back on yes tonight. absolutely um so my joke, I'll open up with my joke. What do you call a sad cup of coffee? Mm. Oh, there's no such thing as a sad cup of coffee. But what, what do you call if? If it were sad? Yeah. What? Depresso. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. It's getting worse. <laughs> That's really good. Um, t okay, well, tonight's topic is one that everybody struggles with. Um, yeah, we titled it How to Defeat Your Worst Enemy. We all have enemies, right? Yes. Everybody has enemies. Uh, but the good news is we have the cure for defeating the worst of the worst of your enemies, which is, surprise, surprise, yourself. And your specifically your own ego and your own pride. pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a struggle that, including myself, I struggle with, but especially Courtney. So this is like, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, you know, and you know, you, even if you, some people might not even know that they're struggling with pride. Mm -hmm. um, we all suffer from it, you know. It's being prideful makes you delusional. Mm -hmm. um, makes you spiteful, makes you bitter, it hurts your ego. So it makes you react out of your ego, out of your emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and you might say, well, that, that's not me. I don't do that, you know, but do you look down on others or do you seek revenge? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the way, maybe that's just the way you say, oh, that's just the way I am. Um, Maybe you're stubborn, a little bit stubborn. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you want to say, oh, I'm just setting my ways. This is just the way I am. Um, you're suffering from insecurities. You're walking around offended, angry. Well, basically all that, the, the root of that is the pride, the pride, mm -hmm. which leads to other sin. Yeah. You know yeah. Um, and not only pride can do that, lead to other sins, but... It can also, you can, it can show its ugly head by being ungrateful Do you agree? Mm, yeah, and cause you to forget what God has already done for you and not trusting God is also being prideful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking you can, you can handle the situation better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you feel you might have an issue with that, with any of that, we have great news. <laughs> Courtney and I have the good news for you. She, uh, like she's always said, it's progression, not perfection. So if you're struggling with that, as long as you're progressing, you even though if you recognize that you're suffering from that or any of that, or you might say, well, let me just hear this just to make sure that I'm not, then that's cool too. Um, I think as long as you progress and you recognize it and you stay in the word and that's how you progress is staying in the word um because this is a tough one this got satan kicked out of heaven yeah so pride mm -hmm. is a big one and it's one of the things that he tempted jesus with you know after the 40 days where he was fasting so this is one of the main struggles of humanity 
is pride and it manifests in different ways. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is that we have dominion over our own self and our own emotions and we even have dominion and authority over our own pride and ego. And so I don't want to I don't want to jump ahead no. to what you're saying. So Well, it starts with the with your heart. Mm -hmm. It's it's what's in your heart is it's being um it ultimately comes from the heart. This is not the pride of being proud of yourself if you lose a couple pounds or you're proud of your kids for good grades. That's mm -hmm. not this type of being proud, being a proud parent. No, this is pride that leads to sin, that leads to sin, that you appear to be one way, but in your heart, you're another way. Mm -hmm. You have that, um, and this, you know, scripture says yeah. evil, wickedness in your heart. And that's, that's and that. good, really good because people, I think people will justify things. Well, that person has a good heart, you know, they just da 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 da. Well, according to the Bible, you bear fruit based on what's in your heart. So if your fruit's not good and you're living in sin and you're living in unforgiveness and you're, you're doing all these things that the world does and you're not living according to the Bible at all, you're just excusing certain verses and justifying them away. That's what's in your heart. So I don't care how good somebody's heart appears to be. I mm -hmm. hate it when people say that about people that are knowingly living in sin or knowingly living in unforgiveness or, or, or bitterness or anger or whatever, whatever it is. It's like, that's, it's not true that they have a good heart. You know, everybody has good intentions. That's, that's, it's about how you live and how you actually do things, how you treat people. Exactly. I think a good indicator of that is if you are, if you call yourself a Christian and you're trying to live a certain way, but you treat the waitress horrible or you're rude to the, to, to the person that you're pumping gas or the clerk there, if you're rude to the people that you see as they uh, it doesn't matter. They're, you know, they're meaningless. They're, mm -hmm. you know, that's a heart issue. Yeah. That, that, that you're, you know, so. And kindness is yeah. a fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Yes. So you might want to look at yourself on that. And we're not, we're not trying to condemn anybody. We're not trying to say anything, mm -hmm. you know, to make somebody feel to belittle anybody or anything. We just, I'm just going to give you scripture and hopefully, you know, Courtney and I can help you. And we're talking to ourselves with this stuff exactly. too, because yes. it's one. like, that's always what I want to do is, you know, preach something that's not going to help other people, but it's also going to help me. That's and you know, on. that is convicting because like going places and being out, sometimes you just get into your own world. At least I do. I'm like, I don't even know like where my head is when I'm out and about. And I'm not always treating people. It's not that I'm treating them bad, yeah, but no, I just am kind of like, whatever. I'm not paying attention to my surroundings as much as I should be. Like well, there might be somebody with a need. And so this is something that we all can work on. And, you know, it's it doesn't mean that you have to be this sweet little, like, oh, so, not be who you are. Like, as as a person, you should be, you know, who God made you to be. If God made you bold, be bold. I'm not saying, you know, sometimes people think, well, if you're if you're bold and you're straightforward, then then how can you, then you're not kind. Well, no. I mean, sometimes the nicest thing you can do is tell somebody the honest to God truth about their situation and they might not like to hear it mm -hmm. but that's kind ultimately right yeah. that's worrying more about their eternal situation than this world that we live in right now so i just wanted to yeah I, uh, the first verse i have tonight um is mark seven fourteen. this is a good one it's amazing it's beautiful actually then jesus called to the crowd to come hear him all of you listen he said, he probably said, come over here and listen to this. <laughs> sit down and shut up. <laughs> yeah, sit down, shut up, and listen. All of you listen, he said. And try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. It is what comes from inside that defiles you. For within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thought, sexual immorality, death, Murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defiles you. That's exactly what we're just talking about. So 
somebody can't have a good heart, they have a good heart, if these are the fruits that they're producing. It, it's, <laughs> I mean, that was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful verse. Yeah. Um, and in Proverbs 16, 5, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. That's how serious this is because he, God knew exactly where this was going to lead down the road of where it was going to lead to. And it's amazing how that works. But. Yeah, and it's a good point you brought up is this is the reason why Satan fell from heaven because yeah. he wanted to be he wanted to be in the one in charge. He wanted to be that's you know, it, that's one way that it appears. But like we were saying, pride is just, it can manifest in a lot of different ways. And it's not like we all should be, like he's saying, progressing in this area. Like we should constantly be better than we were yesterday. It doesn't mean that we're not going to still have pride because we all have layers that we are dealing with and peeling back one by one. But as we're obedient, we become more and more humble because the word humbles you. And sometimes things you go through in life, they'll humble you. Exactly. Um, one of the biggest things I, the way I was raising my kids and before my walk, I was like, there's nothing you can tell me that I don't already know. That was my attitude. And that was being prideful. Like the kids couldn't tell me something, you know, now nah, be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. But in fact, you know, they did know what they were talking about. I was just too prideful to listen to them. So it, it could be that small, you know, because people see things you don't. Mm -hmm. so. that, and that's a key right, right there is that people see things you don't. If you're unwilling to receive any direction from other people, and I'm not talking about like random people. Obviously, you can't listen to counsel from any old person, mm -hmm. right? But... You know, there's a spiritual order. If you, if your pastor is correcting you and you refuse to be corrected, if your peers are correcting you or telling you, and it doesn't have to be in a scolding type of way, could mm -hmm. you be like, listen, that's not working for you. You need to try this. Stop doing that. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Sometimes we receive those corrections because they feel good, but other times they don't feel good on our flesh because it's an area of pride for us. And you'll know if it's an area of pride for you because you'll usually have a reaction that looks a lot like anger mm -hmm. towards the person that's telling you this. And you know what? The reality is somebody might be telling you something who's spiritually, you know, connected with you and you they're wrong. Let's say they're wrong. Let's say they're incorrect on what they're telling you and it's not true at all. You still need to receive it with humility and take it to God and be like, God, I don't see this. You know, but I will say a lot of times other people will see things in your life that you cannot see. You're blind to them. And that's the reason why you've been doing them over and over and over again mm -hmm. is because you can't see that they're actually destroying your life. And that's why we need each other because we help each other grow. And if, if that's why pride will kill you because you can't grow if you have pride yeah. because if somebody tells you something and you're not receiving that correction then you're stuck with it and you're you're gonna stagnate um and that's exactly she she kind of got ahead but sorry hey no no that's fine <laughs> we fight pride with humility and i'll and i'll show you um but in james three fourteen, if you are bitterly jealous and there is self and ambition in your heart don't cover it up don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, which is what people do. Mm -hmm. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Verse 16. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every kind, every and evil of every kind. Mm. And that's what and we fight that. So how do you fight that? And th I know this is, you know, it's short and it's sweet. Um, like my buddy John Tompkins said, impactful. So <laughs> that's how we try to keep it. So we fight your pride with humility. Humility. And I'll give you verses that will help you fight that. Yeah. Um, in James 4, 6, but he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to, define, to defy sin and live an obedient, obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. 
Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God with a contrite heart, and he will, which is a sorrow heart, a sorrow repentance heart. That's what contrite means. And he will come close to you, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts. You double-minded people, be miserable and grieve and weep over your sin. Let your foolish laughter be turned to mourning and your reckless joy to gloom. Humble yourself with an attitude of repentance and insignificance. That's how we are, insignificance in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will give you purpose. It's a good one. So, Yeah, I, I think it's like, you know, when you are trying to seek your own revenge, and you oh, mentioned yeah. that, um, if you humble yourself before God, he's going to exalt you. So, you know, people have enemies, you know, most people have some kind of enemy of some sort. It's not your job to seek revenge. It's not re your job to make them repent. You know, it's not your job to force anything. You know, we, it's our job as believers to continue to trust God, even if it feels like it's sometimes to a fault, we trust him. Mm -hmm. Like we want to be more in faith about him uh, seeking justice for us. We want to be more on the side of trusting him than we are on the side of taking things into our own hands. And that is a struggle for me. Yes. Like, that's hard because, like, him and I both are like this. It's just, like, you want to see justice served yes. in certain situations. Like, you're like, this is so wrong. This is hurting so many people. And I want to make it right. Yes. But the problem is, we as Christians... We need to have that attitude, but we need to be go making it right for other people and let someone else, God, people, whoever, make it right for us. But we shouldn't be seeking our own justice. justice yeah. We need to be seeking the justice of other people. Like the Bible says to help the widow and, and the, and the, um, orphan. and the orphan and, you know, Matthew 25, clothe those that are naked heal those that are, you know, give a shelter to those that are homeless, go visit those in prison, like, go do those things. That's what our job is to do. We seek justice for those people. We, we help those people. And in us doing that, we can have the confidence that we're sowing seeds into our own situation being brought to justice. And pride says, I'm going to take care of it myself. Because, God, you're taking too long, mm -hmm. you know? Because, yeah, it sometimes takes a really long time. And I've been reading First and Second Samuel with, with the story of David because he was just so patient. And I want to be more like him because even when his enemy Saul was delivered into his hand and he could have killed him, easily killed him, he still was like, nope, God will take care of him another way. Somebody else will take, I am not killing God's anointed. No, I don't want to, I don't want to have that blood on my hands. That needs to be our responsibility that even when our enemy is presented to us on a silver platter, I think the real test is, do we show them mercy in that situation? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a test that we all get the opportunity to either pass or fail. And, you know, if, if, if we don't give them mercy, you know, the Bible says he's merciful to those who give mercy. So we want to be merciful to other people when they don't deserve it because we need mercy when we don't deserve it. If you, like she said, the mercy, man, the best way, and it, is it hard? Yes, absolutely it's hard. It's hard. It's hard every day. Like I said, every day we struggle with this in some form yeah. or fashion with this, but the root cause being our pride, if it's our ego, if it's a coworker, if it's a supervisor that you feel like is trying you, if it's a neighbor dude that you feel like is trying you, you know, it's just, it's, the good thing is that there's plenty opportunity 
for you to get better. Yeah. At it. So you'll pass you'll the get test. Tested lots of times. And, and you'll pass it. And you know, I'm 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 kind of averaging a C right now, but I'm, I'm striving for that A plus. You're not flunking out. I'm so not flunking been... anymore, but I'm trying to. I'm striving for that A because it's hard. And if so, if, yeah. if it's from your kids to all, a coworker, supervisor, you know, mm -hmm. people driving in the road. You know, even for the hurricane, Courtney went shopping and, you know, it, it was a madhouse, man. People arguing, cursing each other out. It was yeah. crazy. I said, man, I don't want you going nowhere. <laughs> Just, but, it, but, you know, so you get tried a lot. So the thing is, so you got to, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, the best defense is a great offense. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay in the word. You have to walk in the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit and you have to walk in humility. It, you know, at the end of the day, who cares? You know, who cares? And, you know, it starts off small. Somebody cut you off in traffic or, you know, things like that that mm. can escalate. You know, mm. I cut somebody off in traffic and they honked the horn. I honked back and the guy would look like he was, I don't even know what he was doing. He was like <laughs> flailing his arm out the window. I thought he was trying to take off like a bird or something. He was waving at you. Yeah, he, he was like, back. <laughs> you know, I was, I'm like, dude, really? But that's how people are. But it's, it's you know, we can we can just do what we can do and, and we can't change somebody else. So it's mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Um, and if you're walking around with that anger and pride, that's in second Peter two nineteen. for you are a slave to what controls you. So if we've talked about that before an anger or bitterness or rage or anything like that, that's, what's going to control you. So that means that, like it said there, it's a demonic, it's a demonic influence that has over you to you to do crazy, stupid things. Yeah. Um, and John 15 5 yes i am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and i in them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing mm -hmm. this is the remedy to our pride yeah. so mm -hmm. um in the the living translation first john two sixteen. for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievement and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And if you satisfy the flesh with, you know, by, you know, your cravings and you satisfy the flesh, you'll never be fulfilled. Never. You will never be fulfilled. It's going to be one thing after another. Yeah. There's nothing more fulfilling than doing whatever it is that God's called you to do. So the assignment that he's given you that's way more fulfilling than anything that the world has to offer. The, the things that the world have, has to offer, they're very temporary. And, you know, the second you wake up in the morning with that hangover, you're regretting it. Yeah. You know, the second anything that the world offers as a temporary solution, it always leaves you worse off than you started. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no peace. You know, we've talked about this this topic of peace a lot because... There's not, there's, you can't put a price on peace, like, and you can find peace in any situation that you're in. And so when you're, when you're living according to your flesh and according to your own pride and you won't just like admit, admit you're wrong, you yeah. know, like That's, who cares? Yeah, like humble. what's the big deal or forgive somebody else that's done wrong. Like, like, is it really like, is it, it's like. Is it really worth it holding yeah. on to that grudge? Like, there's freedom in just being like, whatever. I don't even care what you did. It doesn't even matter. It's wandering in the bridge. Let's forget about it. She's not lying. That's the way she is. And I think I've learned so much from her with that. Um, Thank you. Baby. In forgiving. Yeah, because it's hard. It's hard for me. It was hard for me. Um, I still struggle with it, with certain issues and certain mm. people to to forgive him, <laughs> to you know to not want to react out of the flesh it's very difficult it's a very. daily thing you yeah. know there's a temptation sometimes to always want to take matters back into our own hands but ultimately that is our pride how about twice a day uh, yeah maybe I mean, three multiple times, times with me today. it's multiple yeah and multiple people even sometimes yeah. but really i mean it's like it's there's no peace there when you just let things go and you're like you know what that person doesn't deserve forgiveness. They don't deserve mercy. They don't deserve anything. They've, you know, whatever. Maybe they've ruined your life. Maybe yeah. they've caused you a ton of problems. But the reality is that letting that go is just, there's something so very freeing about that. And you can't, the peace that passes all understanding will come upon you when you do this because you cannot find peace by moving away. You know, people, you notice whenever trouble comes, our natural reaction as human beings is we want to run. 
we want to run away. We want to run away from our marriage. We want to run away from our financial set. We want to run away from our house. We want to run away from our kids. We want to move to a new state and move to a new city. Start all over fresh because why? We don't have peace. We think, oh, if I, if I just go over there, maybe I'll feel better. If I just get away from this problem, maybe if I start over somewhere else, I'll feel much better. You cannot run away from that. You're, you're, you have to sit where you're at in the misery of it and recognize that you are the problem. And whenever you feel that, 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 that ego come rise back up, whenever you start to feel just that turmoil in your heart and in your spirit and in your emotions, the beautiful thing is you can ask yourself, is this really me, how I feel right now, or is this my ego talking? Yeah, that's a good what, one. What, what is it? Is it me or is it my ego? Okay, this is my ego, so I need to put this thing down. I need to put this thing under. You know, Paul said he buffets his body. He beats his body into submission. You have to beat your ego into submission. You have to force that thing to submit and to be humble because it's really hard. Humble. Yes. I, I, I think the, the only... And the only way is to stay in the word. Yeah. You have to learn. It's your personal relationship mm -hmm. with that. I've always said that. We've always said that. In Colossians 3.10, you are living a brand new kind of life that is continually learning more and more of what is right. And that's what you do when you stay in the word. You continually learn. You're learning. Um, trying constantly to be more and more like Christ who created this new life within you. Um, that's good. Verse 12, and this is out of the Amplified, put on a heart, like you said, of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or pleasantness comes with good temper. You just said that. Amazing. Um, verse 14, beyond all these things, put on, it says, put on, wrap. Some translation says, clothe yourself in unselfish love which is the perfect bond of unity for everything bound together in agreement with each one seeks the best for others. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of who walks daily, who walks daily, we talked about that, with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling the questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, we were called as members of one body. That's how important our heart is. And to stay in the word and to forgive, walk humility, exactly what she said, and daily, exactly what you just said is in that verse. So that's amazing. Yeah, it, it's it's not something that our flesh likes. So you can feel when your flesh starts taking over. You know, you can feel it because there's that peace goes right out the window and you start to want to make things happen on your own terms. Uh -huh. Let me see. Um, I have another verse. Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes boiling up with an arrogant attitude of import, self-importance, then comes dishonor and shame. Mm -hmm. But when the humble, the, teach, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. Mm -hmm. I like so. that. Uh, chiseled, chiseled by trial. Because that's true. Yeah. Like trials will humble you. You know, and you go through things. You recognize that you don't have control. You know, I've gone. We've gone through stuff that it's. It's like you, you realize. Like it's not about you. Nothing's about you. You are just like in this place of completely depending on God by force, and you have a decision to make. Do you continue to lean into Him, or do you choose the things of the world? As as your yep. you know way of escape from it. That's great. Um, there's nothing you can do about your past, so don't let the enemy throw that back up. And you know your past is your past. That is mm -hmm. it. You know, there's, but there's plenty you can do about your future, and it starts. Let it start today. Let it start right now. Let it start five minutes when we get off. Get in that Bible. But let it start today. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do about the past. What somebody did to you, what you're holding on to, you got to let that go. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start all over. You got to wipe the slate clean, do whatever, however you need to do it, but you got to let it go. Yeah. It's like people literally will hold on to things and it will ruin their life. Yes. Ruin it will relationships. ruin their entire life is ruined because yeah. they couldn't, 
let go of something that hurt them at one time. And oh my gosh, like what a waste, what a waste of your life to be dwelling on something that like you had no control over and that you couldn't change. Like, let it go. Let them go. Let the person go. Let the situation go. Just be free from it. It, it seems like it's just crazy how the enemy has people in such bondage, bondage because yeah. of that. Um, basically, like you said, there's two ways you can do it. You know, um, I think the two is you can agree with what the good news says, what we just said, the good news, and continue to stay in the word and let our faith grow by guarding your heart mm -hmm. or believing the destructive lies that the enemy puts in your thoughts. Yeah. Because in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful how you think about things and, and what, how else is feed it the word and you'll know what to think about. You'll know how to react and you know what mm -hmm. to put in your heart. That's what he says. Guard that word in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's my last verse. So you... Again, yeah, and I think, you know, it's ultimately, like like we were saying, like the most fulfilling thing is to do what God's called you to do. And if you're weighed down by trying to seek your own justice and your own revenge, first of all, let me tell you, there's no satisfaction. There's no satisfaction mm -hmm. in that because you'll never be, it'll never be enough. It's like that's the thing about things that the enemy offers us and things of the flesh. You can move away. You can start a new relationship. You can, I don't even care. You could. You know why is that? Because if you run away from an area, when you get to that new place, you still got to look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. And it's your heart. The pride is in mm -hmm. your heart. We just showed you the scripture that said it's in yeah. your heart. You can't run away from your heart. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you can go around the world to the other side of the yeah. world. And you're still going to look at yourself in the mirror and realize that you're still going to have the same problems. You're still going to be the same evil person that you were with the same wickedness in your heart. Um, and, you know, and you can get you just, rid of that. Yeah. It's really not hard. It's like you just have to die to yourself, though. Yes. And, and make that conscious decision when you feel your ego rising up to recognize, okay, this is my ego. This is my attempt to seek what's I think what I think is right with my own limited view of things and that's the that's why it's so prideful and so arrogant because we see just like the Bible says Paul said we see dimly through a dark glass we think we're so smart and so spiritual and so great we see dimly just we see that like we see nothing we see, see shadows and figures and we're trying to like build our cases for justice for ourselves around what we can barely see instead of trusting God who can see everything crystal clear and yet you're trying to do it yourself and you're not satisfied so you're trying to make uh, trying to get your own fresh start that's not going to work I don't care how many places you move I don't care how many new relationships you start I don't care how many times you refresh your social media I don't care how many times you get a new job none of that's going to work it's not going to work. I'm telling you. I wish you would just listen to me instead of continuing in the cycle yeah, because you would be a lot happier. <laughs> uh, I'll end with this. I'll end with this uh, verse. Matthew 6.33. This is the formula to your pride. This is the, the antidote. This is the medicine mm -hmm. to your pride. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. That's right standing with God. We did a live on that. And he will give you everything you need. Everything. It says everything. Not some things, not the things you deserve. It says everything. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So it didn't say nothing about your past, what you've done, what you got going on, what you did. Nope. He's telling you worry about today. Not even mm -hmm. worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that is the remedy to that. Yep. And this is something we have to do daily. We yes. have to every yes. day. We're, 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 I did this today, literally. I literally today was like, oh, I want to just take this situation and do this and this and this. To you. Just oh. kidding. <laughs> wow. And that, but really, I did. And it's like, I feel like it's the enemy, like, just, like, like 
trying to stir me up. Like, I literally feel like that. Like, he's like, yeah, like, trying to get me all riled up and mad. And I'm I like, know. okay, no, that's the ego. That's myself trying to I know. whatever. Oh. Huh? Hmm. What'd you say, baby? Oh. Yeah, it's a, so it's literally like, okay, nope. Die, flesh, die, flesh, die. <laughs> Let's talk about so our, the chasing. Oh yeah, so our quote tonight is from somebody really amazing who, um, for two days they showed in the theaters a, a film on Mother Teresa, and um, it was Catholic inspired. But I've always wondered about her, and they did it to introduce Mother Teresa to a new generation because she's been dead now for twenty five years, and. You know, we all hear, I've heard a lot of things about her, but um, I've been super intrigued by, by her work lately. And so, um, went and saw the film. It, it's not in the theaters anymore, unfortunately, but it was just two nights. But it was amazing. She was the most humble. You want to talk about humble. She didn't like having her picture taken. She didn't like publicity. She didn't like, the, the, you know, the, the attention from people, but she accepted it because she believed that it would bring attention to the poor and to the needy and to the helpless and the hopeless and I cried probably half of the movie because it's just like the human suffering and the human condition is just honestly so overwhelming in this world this is why you don't have time to sit here and like dwell on yourself mm -hmm. there's people who need you and um it, it, sometimes you know I know for myself no matter what it is that I feel God tells me to do Anytime I do it, I feel like it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Like it's like there's there's so much more need than what I can offer or whatever. But I loved this quote because it made me feel like those little things. She said, "Do you want to say it?" No, you say. She said, "Do small things with great love," and I love that because we can all do small things. You know, we can all do. We can all love our neighbor. We can all love the person in front of us. We can all. You know, and, and the, her biggest thing was that she sees Jesus in every face of every person that she helps. She doesn't see the person. She sees Jesus. And that's exactly what Matthew 25 is all about. Is that he said, the, whatever you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. You did it to me. So whatever we're doing to these people, these small things that we're doing to these people, we do it for them. We do it for Jesus. Not really for them. We do it for, for him. So I loved it because she was like, she sees his face and every person that she ministers to or feeds or blesses or whatever. And um, she was just a really amazing mm -hmm. Jesus-filled person. So Awesome. Yeah. Make sure you check that out. Yeah. All right. All right. So thank you guys so much for being on. And, um, you know, feel free to message us if you have any questions or... Um, you know, share this with your friends if you think it'll help. Um, hit the like button that helps our algorithm. We want to reach more people. It's been pretty cool lately. We've had yeah. people tell us, hey, we saw your video. So that's working. We want more of that. Our goal is not to reach the people who know Jesus. It's to reach the people who've never known Jesus. We want to show him to them. Yes. That's our goal. So um, you guys can help us with that. Nice. And thank you again for sharing us. Let us come into your evening mm -hmm. um, and listening to us. We really enjoy doing this. Yep. We really love love you guys. Thank you for the support. Yep. Um, and keep those questions coming, the comments, whatever, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, like Courtney said, you can reach out to us. Mm -hmm. You know, if you feel comfortable talking to her, you can talk to her. You can message her if you feel comfortable talking to me, whatever. But that's what we're here for. Um, Yep. And we'll be back next Thursday. Thank you so God much. God bless you guys. Thank Have you. a great week. Love you guys.